Today I will show you a biography, drama, history film from 2011 that is based on true events, titled Colonia. Lita is a stewardess and her plane lands in Chile. The pilot and flight attendants are driving in a van, but it's stopped because the street is blocked. There are protests against inflation and food shortages going on. She sees her long-distance boyfriend Daniel and gets out of the van. He notices her too and walks up to her and they kiss. She wanted to surprise him so she didn't tell him she was coming. They go to his apartment. She looks around to see photographs and posters and says he's been busy. He says he didn't come to Chile for nothing. Lena says he has passed the home inspection but he still needs to be searched and they make out. Later he brings Lena to a meeting of his movement. He is brought on stage and gives a speech. He came to Chile four months ago, and it has become his country. Daniel believes that they all need more solidarity and that the suffering of many shouldn't be the foundation of wealth for a few. The crowd cheers. Next morning he makes breakfast but seems to have forgotten to put on pants. She grabs his camera and starts taking photos. He chases after her and says I love you and they start kissing. Later he's developing the photos. She compliments him on having a great eye and says they have gotten so much better. When they get to bed, Daniel says he can't believe she has to leave in two days and asks her to stay with him. Lena says she can't stay but maybe he can come back to Germany. Following morning Daniel gets a phone call. He is informed that there's been a military coup, General Pinochet has taken over, President Allende's supporters are being arrested and that Daniel's posters at the university were confiscated. They are coming to his apartment so they have to leave immediately. When they get on the street people are being lined up by the military. He starts discreetly taking photos of the chaos. A shot is heard and people start running in panic but the military chase them down and whack them. He's still taking photos and starts walking closer for better shots but gets noticed. They take his camera and start beating him as well. Lena tries to stop them but her attempts are futile. They are brought to a stadium. Daniel says they're foreign citizens but is ignored, receives a blow to the stomach and is ordered to get in line and stay quiet. A general informs people that law and order is being established in Chile and everyone who's there by mistake will soon be released. Soldiers have orders to shoot everyone who moves or talks. They are brought to the middle of the stadium where a chopper lands. A general and a man with a bag over his head walk out. He points out Allende supporters from the crowd. The first one gets taken away but the second voices his support for their opposition and is shot. He gets past Daniel but takes a second look and tells them he made the posters. He is taken to a bus and driven away. Lita is released from the stadium. There are dozens of people looking for their loved ones. She gets back to Daniel's apartment and finds it trashed. Lena goes to the Allende supporters looking for answers. They inform her he's been taken to the Colony of Dignity. She says they need to get him out but they state that nothing can be done about Daniel and that they're going into hiding. Daniel wakes up tied to a metal bed. A man walks in and starts interrogating him. Daniel says that he's German and is innocent. The man starts electrocuting him. He's beaten and tortured by the army until Pius turns up pretending to be a caring savior. Pius says that he's here now and there's no danger anymore so Daniel can relax. Lena goes to Amnesty International, which is a global movement to end human rights abuses. The man tells her that the Colony of Dignity is a long-established, respectable and government-approved enterprise. He then signals her to keep quiet and they act like she leaves. He then starts playing loud music and tells her he's being bugged and they can talk now. He informs her that her boyfriend is in a cult run by Pius, who ran from Germany after World War II and has set up a world with his own rules in the middle of nowhere. She asks if she could get in, but is warned that she may never get back out. Lena leaves a letter for the pilot saying that she won't be coming and asks him to cover for her and that she will be on the next week's flight. She dresses like a nun, takes the bus and travels south. When she gets off, the driver instructs her to walk towards the mountain. She walks through the fields and finds a fenced-off area in the woods with guard towers. Lena reaches the gate and a hatch opens with a woman saying, God bless. She responds with the same and is led in by a senior cult member Gisela. She escorts her to a building and asks if she wants to join them. Lena says yes and that she wants to follow the Lord. Gisela takes her passport and other belongings, throws them in a box, and takes them to another room, saying she won't be needing any of them. As Lena is looking around, a boy leaves a different room. She sees him crying and asks if he's alright, but Gisela comes back and tells her to leave him alone because it's none of her business. A woman takes the kid while telling him to pull himself together and stop crying. Gisela tells Lena it's her turn to go in the room to do a general confession. She enters and sees the cult leader Pius. He asks her name and tells her that once she joins, she must remain and Lena agrees. 
He tells her she's attractive and must have a boyfriend. Lena denies this and says she wants to follow the Lord but he can see in her eyes and soul that she isn't being truthful. Pius then orders her to take off her apron and open her blouse. When she does he declares, grey rags on the outside and instruments of a prostitute beneath. He then stands up and smells her while saying that he can smell the beast of hell. He goes on aggressively questioning whether she renounces Satan, sins of the flesh and all lies and deceit. Finally he asks why she's here, to which Lena responds that she's here for Pius, because she needs him. He thinks she has finally spoken truthfully and hugs her. Gisela explains that men, women and children live separately because it's better for everyone that way. She shows her the women's dorm and instructs Lena to use a bandage to tie down her breasts and take off her shoes because she looks like a slut. In the evening the other women return from work. Lena greets them but they don't respond and avoid eye contact. When Gisela has left a woman next to her Doro asks if she's from the outside and Lena says yes. Doro starts giggling and asks if she can tell her a secret and says she may be getting married soon. Lena is confused because men and women live separately. Gisela comes back, interrupting their conversation and starts giving out mandatory pills without explaining what they are. The next day Daniel is being evaluated by a doctor who is horrified about his condition. She thinks the electric shocks may have damaged his cortex. Pius states that everyone is good for something. Meanwhile Lena is working with other women harvesting potatoes. She gets dizzy and falls on the ground. Gisela starts whipping her while calling her a lazy slut. Lena says she just needs some water. Gisela brings a bucket full of water, but Lena is forbidden to drink it and must carry it around. Lena cries herself to sleep that night. A week has passed. There's been a schedule change and all women go to the women's hall. Lena gets a chance to ask Doro about her fiancé, she explains they only met once, three years ago at the mixed parade and have been in love since. Pius is saying a bunch of religious stuff and the men cheer to his every phrase. He's trying to resurrect a dead guy. The women are in the next room channeling their energy or whatever. Some guy stands up to the mic and says that they all heard God's voice through Pius but concludes that their wish couldn't come through because there's too much sin in their community. They start wailing. Another month passes. Daniel, who acts mentally challenged and calls himself Hans, is brought to a blacksmith. The doctor tells him that Hans is as dumb as they come and that he just needs to keep an eye on him. The blacksmith gives him a meaningless task and Daniel plays the part. When the blacksmith is gone Daniel explores his surroundings and manages to get into a dark room and finds a camera. He gets caught but plays dumb and says he needs to pee. While working Gisela pulls Lena aside and starts talking about the marriage. Thinking it's common knowledge, Lena mentions that the groom's name is Dieter. That night Gisela comes in and takes Doro, who is crying and struggling. She forgets to lock the door so Lena follows to see what they're doing. She looks through the window and sees all the men in the room, with a kid singing in front and Doro looking distressed. Pius tells the kid to stop and start smelling the air. He states that it still stinks and that even the divine singing couldn't drive the devil out. The men agree to everything Pius says and exaggerate all of his emotions. Pius asks Dieter what he thinks about this ugly stinking cow. He looks hesitant but says it stinks. He's then asked to come up and relieve her from the stench. Pius states that it's the demons he smells and they need to be driven out. Doro begs for mercy but Pius says, what we do, we do with love. Dieter starts hitting her and all the men cheer. Lena finds Daniel in the crowd. Pius then asks the other men to help out Dieter, but Lena gets noticed and runs back to the dorm. Not knowing which of the women it was, Pius starts beating Gisela for not locking the door. The next day Lena catches Urzel alone and inquires about Doro's condition. Urzel says she'll survive. Lena then asks how to be taken to men's gathering like Doro. The women are working the field and Gisela gets distracted, so Lena runs off and goes for a swim. Later Lena is sent to the men's gathering for defiling the water with her stinking naked body but can't see Daniel. Pius explains how all women are full of lies and deceit and need to be cleansed. The men start the cleansing, but a loud horn interrupts them. Daniel has been trying to escape and has triggered an alarm. He tries to climb over the fence, but gets electrified and passes out. They find Daniel but don't punish him since they think his brain is fried from the torture and he just wandered off. Three months pass. Pius is in the boys' dormitory and they sing to him. He makes his pick for the day and three of them go shower. He enters shortly after. There's a mixed parade and everyone puts on their best clothes and is instructed to smile and wave their flags. As cars are driving through, Daniel finally sees Lena for the first time after 130 days of them both being there. She asks him to meet at the potato shed at night. Pius sells the government weapons and offers torture services, so they turn a blind eye to this place. 
The general also wants to buy poison gas they produce but wants to see if it works first. Pius finally finds a use for Daniel. Daniel volunteers for guard duty and goes to see Lena. He says he's sorry they brought her here but Lena says she joined up to find him. Daniel explains that they don't hide anything from him because they think his brain is fried. Men women and children are separated because a family gives a sense of belonging. Once in a while he allows them to meet to make children, but takes the kids away from their mothers at three months so they never even know their parents. As they're talking he steps on a hatch and he climbs down to find a lit tunnel. Gisela comes back for Lena as her shift is over. Daniel stays down and explores. When he finds the room he was tortured in he gets flashbacks and decides to smash the equipment. The next morning Lena is asked to see Pius through the speakers. He rambles about how you can't trust women with brains because they lose their way easily and instructs her to spy on Urzel, because he can smell that she's up to something. He arranges for them to see each other more. Lena knows that Urzel hates being here so they are honest with each other. Urzel says she was brought to the compound when she was nine by her mother Gisela. Later that day Daniel is having a medical examination. He's drooling and repeats random words people say. As he leaves he accidentally drops the cross. Urzel opens it up and finds a photo of him and Lena. That night Daniel explains that there's a whole system of tunnels below the compound that connects most buildings. He also thinks he has found the exit because it was the only tunnel blocked with steel bars. They have to leave tonight because the poison gas will be tested on him tomorrow. Daniel wants to expose this place so he took a bunch of photos of the tunnels with the camera from the workshop. Lena says they wouldn't even be here if he didn't take pictures in the first place. They are interrupted by the sounds of Gisela's tractor and Daniel goes back in the tunnels but drops one of the photos and Lena hides it under a bucket. Gisela drops Urzel off but she forgot her knife, so Gisela goes to fetch it. They start talking and soon learn they both were told to spy on the other. Lena asks why Pius is doing all of this. She thinks it's because he loves power and the little boys. She tells Lena that she found the photo in the cross and knows they are planning to escape and tells her she is pregnant. Gisela comes back and notices Lena is holding the same potato, so she tells her to move. She picks up the bucket and finds the photo. Pius is interrogating her but Daniel shows up and says he's the one that found it and leads them to the blacksmith's darkroom. They find all the photos in the blacksmith's notebook, so Pius thinks he betrayed him and lets Lena go. Gisela is escorting her back but Lena notices Daniel in the shadows and manages to hit Gisela with a branch. By this time Pius realizes he's been duped and everyone starts frantically looking for Lena and Daniel. They run back to Urzil, enter the tunnels and Daniel cuts the lock. They manage to get outside, but Urzil steps on a tripwire, gets shot and dies instantly. Lena and Daniel hitch a ride and manage to get to the German embassy, where they show them the photos. They are given passports but are informed their flight is only in a week. Lena calls the pilot and manages to get two seats for today's flight. The lady isn't happy and makes a phone call. Two diplomats get them into the airport through an underground entrance and put them in a room, saying that they will get them as soon as boarding starts. A bit later they see Pius meeting with them and realize they're locked in, so they escape through the window. They run through the airport, get out on the runaway and drive a baggage cart to the plane. Pius pulls some strings and the tower cancels their flight permit. After some pondering the pilot takes off and they manage to get out of Chile. 